Hi there. George R. R. Martin made a new blog post update in which he gave a general overview of how various different projects are going, and briefly, not in depth, he just said, oh yeah, work is going well on Winds of Winter, and I've seen more rough-cut episodes for House of the Dragon, they're also looking nice. And it wasn't really anything we hadn't heard before. And then all the clickbait sites had to not only talk about it, but not talk about it well. They're just making things, I'm talking about like the screen rants of the world, that why do you even do this? You have, you're not reading the previous one. It's not like going on Reddit and seeing a bizarre fan theory from someone who at least was paying attention and comparing them. Some of these things are written by people who you can tell they've never reported on Martin before. So that's just nonsense. But they're, they're not reporting on it. They're using it as a title. Martin blog update, and they don't even read it. So... I mean, these, the really bad clickbait titles of the world that are assuredly, you've seen the pop-ups for that. So when people are marking, oh my god, there's a window, he just mentioned things are going well in one sentence in a longer blog post about really other stuff. So this video is not really about Martin made a blog post update, because it wasn't really an update about this, about Winds of Winter, it was about his other projects and things he's doing with other writers. This is a meta-commentary on... The way people just do not have reading comprehension, do not pay attention to what Martin is saying about his own stuff. Well, I do want to cover what what did he actually say. Um, it's nothing he hasn't really said before about Winds of Winter in the past two years, that work is proceeding reasonably well, and it's shaping up to be the longest book in the series. He knows that because when you plan out a book ahead of time, you know how many chapters are going to be into it. You know, he makes the... the outline, the, the skeleton of it. He knows these are the chapters that are going to be in it. Depends on how long each chapter is, of course. Uh, he reiterated that in this blog post, stuff he said before, that it will be probably longer than the longest of the current five ones, A Dance with Dragons. In prior interviews, he's talked about this, that um, the two longest ones are th the third and fifth books, a, a Storm of Swords and A Dance with Dragons. A Dance with Dragons is slightly longer by a difference of about 200 words, but it both books, the third and fifth, are 414,000 words long. It's just that A Storm of Swords is plus 600 words, Dance with Dragons is plus 800 words. It's a difference of 200 words, it's not really that much. But of course, you know, th these are huge, gigantic books, and... A lot of the international versions split their release in half, split them in two volumes. A lot of countries you can find Storm of Swords in two halves, even in the UK, even though you know, it's in English, that they did that. And he's remarked before on how he's had big discussions with his publisher about should he split Winds of Winter into two books or move chapters around, because it's reaching the physical limits of how big a book can be without the pages falling out of the spine. They do know how big a book can be before you can't make a book that large. It's deeper than it is tall. So they're going through that. I think the simple answer is release it as a boxed set. You know, not like a separate release of volume one, then volume two a year later. They're, they're both done. Like, you can go into a bookstore today and buy the Lord of the Rings trilogy, not as one hardcover, though you can do that. But, you know, three separate hardcovers bound together in a slipcase. I'm thinking, you know, a slipcase, you know, cardboard box or something that has volume one and volume two in it. I'd be fine with that. It's just a, the, the physical release doesn't matter as much to me as the words on the page. So it'll be pretty long. Just the way he said it in this blog post that it sounded kind of concrete that, wow, it's really shaping up to be longer, that he has a good sense of how long it is. And he did stress it's not even done yet, much less I'm in the revision phase. But people started getting excited that he sounds like he's doing well. He sounded like he's doing well and making progress for the past two years, and I believe him. It's not, oh, he's teasing us with work went well this month. By that, he means he didn't hit a writer's block. And I'm fine with that. As long as there is forward progress, I don't consider that teasing. That's you worked yourself up about him remarking on, oh, things went well today. As for my own thoughts on when Winds of Winter will come out, 
I've said this before in longer videos, simply I think there is a good probability we might get it by 2023, specifically because of the Broadway play, that when they announced that Broadway play about the tourney at Harren Hall, and they stated it will reveal things about Jon Snow's parents that have never been revealed in the books before, and in separate interviews Martin has already said, that is so central to the storyline, that plot mystery, I will never reveal such details outside of a main novel. I'm not going to make a little novella, I'm not going to state it in an interview or, or in notes. That has to come out in a novel. So you put two and two together, the fact they said they are releasing this stuff after he was really insistent about that. Martin thinks that the next book will get done before the Broadway stage play reveals all this stuff in 2023. He could be wrong. It, he could hit another writer's block at any day. It's a question of what is the earliest he could get it done, not necessarily when might he get it done, because, you know, something else might go wrong. People have been remarking on how, oh, we might never finish the series. That is just, that's pouting. You're not actually talking rationally or making a point, being constructive, even, even to criticize that, yeah, there is a chance that, what if it takes another ten years to finish book seven and Martin's getting on in years he might not live another ten years? That is a question. But I said before, I don't need the final book to prove the TV show wrong. We just need book six to come out to show just how off the rails the later seasons went. Things like with Stannis, or that people just came to the point where they were ignoring the books. It's so weird, they pester when's the next book, and they ignore stuff from books four and five. That, when's the next book coming out? Would you like to read the pre-existing Dorne chapters that were never adapted? The pre-existing Sansa chapters that were never adapted? That is so weird to me. So, Martin gave a brief update that things are going well on Winds of Winter, and it's going to be really long. We already knew that. Questions about, will he outlive this? It will... Do you not live long enough? We already knew that, and I've already said, I just need book six to come out to shame the world when people are opening it up and seeing that this is like what Ariane Martell is doing, that Sansa's storyline never interacts with the Boltons, much less the invented rape stuff, that there might not even be a Battle of the Bastards. All of that craziness from seasons five, six, even through seven. We don't need the absolute, and I'd like it, but just to shatter the cult of celebrity that will know the show is... To, and if you think that hasn't been shattered, you haven't been online that much to see that there are still people defending, oh, oh, it was controversial, it was awful, and the people in charge who were not criticizing Benioff and Weiss are in many cases still in charge of most of the news sites. That the press gave them a free pass, and really, we the fans were angry at season eight, and to the point they couldn't ignore, the news sites couldn't ignore this. Where were all the complaints going back to season five? The after season eight, I'm not exaggerating, I wanted an op-ed by major news sites, mainstream news sites, going, wow, we were wrong to give them the benefit of the doubt after season five. Which, at the time, we were yelling at them, why are you giving these men the benefit of the doubt? This isn't a red flag. This is a dumpster fire. They have an invented rape subplot with, with Sansa. They have this racist Dorn thing, and they're butchering Stannis. It has nothing to do with wokeism, because, you know, Stannis is a white man, and they, they're butchering his character. And they just shrugged and moved on. And I compare it to the Joss Whedon cult, that it took over a decade of increasingly Whedon being weird. Starting as far back publicly as Age of Ultron and then forward, that he was on such a pedestal. He was the god king of Comic-Con in like 2008, that even though there were so many widespread complaints for the Snyder Cut movement and everything, the reporters were themselves fans and didn't want to believe it, so they didn't bother reporting on it. That's the situation we are in. The purpose of this video, and it, all this is built up, the meta-commentary of... I'm sure a lot of you have run into people online who badger you with memes and talking points that, well, of course Game of Thrones went bad once they ran out of books. What are you talking about? Like, I, 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 I have 
I wouldn't say flashbacks. I mean, like in a traumatic situation, I just I get that in my head all the time. I wish not to admonish someone, like attack them publicly, but I wish I was at a convention panel where someone was stupid enough to say that on into a microphone. And me also at the panel could turn to them and say and confront them in a in a venue they couldn't just run away from. What do you even mean by that? They didn't run out of books. Remember when the con they want to bury the controversy from 2015, where we were all deeply upset and insulted and defended, and that do you remember the Sansa rape stuff and you're complaining this isn't from the books, and you're turning around and saying, well, yeah, the bad stuff was only once they ran out of books. And it was even stuff before season five. Just getting, there were hints, there were warning signs. The first four seasons, the really bad stuff, season five onwards, that they want to pretend that the Sansa rape controversy never even happened, or that Dorne didn't happen, or Stannis. And it isn't a coherent counter ideology. It's what I call blank spacing. And I'm not the only one who's seen this. I remember there was that one guy who tried to put together a documentary, didn't really take shape, about how the press gave him a free pass. This is like back in 2016. And he's, he managed to interview a reporter live, you know, a meet interview live, and told him, and asked him, why did the Sansa rape happen? And he just freezes. He really doesn't have an answer. He doesn't have a defense, but he refuses. He can't really bring himself to defend it or to accept that it was absurd. And the reason I, I, I kept fumbling over my words there is I don't want to accost someone in public, but everyone's hiding behind the shield of online anonymity. That people can badger you in a comment section about, oh yeah, it's Martin's fault the show went bad, not Benioff and Weiss, because they ran out of books. And then you reply to them, what the hell was season five to you with the Sansa rape? They couldn't say that they ran out of books. These terrible plot lines were happening because they avoided published material. They can just choose not to respond. Or, very frequently, the other thing, it just, ugh, it's in my head all the time, they just repeat themselves. That's what gets me most, how weird this would be to be happening in three dimensions at like a, pa a, a public panel in front of a room full of people, that if, it's like they just, you, you say, it, Martin finishing the books quicker wouldn't have made the, the show better, look how bad season five was, because like the, the Sansa rape, for example, some, okay, person A goes, oh, the, uh, the show got bad because Martin didn't finish the books quicker, person B turns to them and me or someone that goes, that's absurd. The Sansa material from books four and five was abandoned with the Sansa rape. What do you say to that? Person A will then just have this pause and repeat, the show went bad because Martin didn't finish him quick enough. And it's that whole cult mentality online thing that's spreading, you know, I wonder what like, the effect of social media the past decade, how much that really affected things, that people don't make structured arguments with cited evidence anymore. Happens in politics a lot more than ever, but also in general, they make appeals to emotion. That, that That's a, a debate term, appeal to emotion. That it's what you feel really well, and that we're all in our little echo chamber, and you, you can just block people on Twitter if you don't agree with them, if they're pointing out the inconvenient truth that but they abandoned the fourth and fifth books. How can you say they ran out of books? That this isn't even Sansa's book storyline. Or in other for other characters, that may, on, at least on a general level, if they were relatively close to the books, like, let's say Daenerys was relatively close to the published books, they decently covered her marine storyline. Not well, but presentably. They chose to burn through the fourth and fifth books in a single season. They wanted to get done to go to do Star Wars movies. When I was saying this after season six, I was ignored. Now, after season seven and eight, it was unthinkable to say that after season six. No, these are professional screenwriters. This is the next Peter Jackson. He wouldn't do that. Thankfully, a lot more people are willing to admit now, yeah, seasons seven and eight were truncated because they wanted to leave to do their movie career. Martin wanted it longer. 
HBO is on record as saying they wanted ten seasons at least. They didn't want to end it this quickly. And Martin said, you know, books four and five should have been two seasons at least. And as I was saying, A Dance with Dragons is slightly longer than A Storm of Swords. A Storm of Swords, the third book, was adapted as two seasons. It was so long. Seasons three and four, which were very well received because they took their time to do it right. At the time, and even now, Martin says, you could have gotten three seasons out of books four and five. And I've actually seen people go, well, we had to rush through it because Marine is so stupid. Maybe TV Marine would have been more interesting if they put in stuff from the books. Like, I don't know, fan favorite Strong Bellwas? If you're going to, oh, Marine is stupid, well, obviously I like some of the other stuff more, but it's interesting, and it's with, with dealing with all the mercenary companies and stuff, and Tyrion dealing with with the Second Sons and everything, and and, and Penny, and Strong Bellwest, that they really didn't try to develop Marine as characters in a way I think another adaptation could make something presentable. And no one, I actually last week was arguing against someone who said, oh yeah, you wanted Marine to last through season nine. And I said, no, I wanted them her to leave Maureen maybe the end of season seven out of a ten-season ten, ep- ten season show, then have two full seasons of uh, 20 episodes of Daenerys, if Daenerys is even going to turn evil. You do that in 20 episodes, not two. No one is saying they wanted nine seasons of filler Maureen stuff, because if you had nine seasons, you'd put in all the stuff from the books they cut out. Not that even Martin isn't that big into Marine. That it is like the Miranese not a blog, a blog making. It was a commentary on war, and both sides wanted to do that. If you've read A Dance with Dragons, it's actually pretty interesting. I'm rambling here. I'm sorry. Just I want you to tell me in the comments how the hell do you respond to people or recount incidents specifically where people were harassing you, saying it's Martin's fault the show got bad because the books weren't finished. And you point out they abandoned the books in book five and mixed and matched things. Remember that giant rape controversy? And it just does not compute. They just stare at you and, and just repeat what they said. But it couldn't be that. It's Martin's fault the books are like that. And it's you see that on, on in social media and text-based interaction it doesn't even need to be in person, like in a Zoom, I'm not trying to be threatening, in a Zoom call or you know, multi-person thing. How weird it would be in three dimensions, you know, looking at a person in the face, in like a, a multi-person, like six-person Zoom call. What are you going to do? Just ignore the words coming out of my mouth as I'm saying, the books were done. You chose not to do those storylines. The people complaining at other things like that you didn't do book you're on, you're on Greyjoy. That isn't because the books aren't finished. There's the very fact that we're complaining about things you cut means they were in print. And all the Dorn stuff with Arianne and how racist that was, it doesn't hold up. But it's, it would be, if you're saying I'm some conspiracy theorist, I wouldn't be upset if this was being spread by one group of Benioff and Weiss fans. Would that it were. It's a meme. How do you fight a meme? And I think the problem is ignorance, that the way you fight that is by having a well-developed infrastructure of journalism to educate the public. And because so much of Game of Thrones reporting turned into clickbait and hype reporting, that there really was no in-depth behind-the-scenes analysis, that a lot of people, when I actually sit down and explain all the evidence to them, go, wow, you changed my mind. Why weren't news sites telling me this? I do have faith in people and that they're presented with all this, the shit we've seen on my channel from the, the stuff, behind-the-scenes clips of Benioff and Weiss said that they're idiots. Most people honestly would turn around. There would still, of course, be a fraction, a minority, who are just so diehard that they, even now there's people who defend Season 8, and they're the real fanatics. They're not even like the watchers on the wall crowd who just, they do the blank space thing of it's upsetting to talk about, so I don't. Rather than admit something was wrong, 
I don't want to, but I have no defense, so I just avoid talking about it. And the entire system is broken of news reporting that there was a massive, massive failure in journalistic standards. And I have my theories on this of why that happened. I think it's due to the shifting nature of TV reporting and you know, with online and social media and stuff. Tell me in the comments, how do you deal, how, maybe, maybe you don't know how to deal with it. Just commiserate with us by telling us, how the heck do you deal with people who, whenever they hear, oh, work is happening on Winds of Winter, say, God damn it, the show would have been better if Martin had finished the books quicker. When they went off book well before they ran out of material, years before they ran out of material. There's even stuff, it's all part, it's not a lot of different problems. It's all the same problem. We're showing off the actors, even like Talissa in season two and stuff they did to Danny's storyline. It's part of the same pattern of stuff they did to season five onward. We're showing off the actors to further our own careers. They were never trying to, not, not only were they not trying to adapt the story, they weren't even like telling a coherent TV show. It isn't a TV show. It's a series of actor sizzle reels to try to show them off. It isn't a legitimate TV production. Yeah, there is an argument like anime and manga. Sometimes the anime diverges from the manga, the source material. This isn't like that at all. This isn't a TV show. It's just, look at what season eight was, where it's just a series of overacting, chewing the scenery scenes strung together haphazardly. It isn't even... It, it, Hey, if this was just a matter of adapting the books, why were TV only fans so upset by the by season eight? The, I don't need to prove the, the fact that so many millions of people thought this is incoherent. It doesn't stand on its own. It's not a TV show as a coherent narrative. And I think they convinced themselves they could what make some sort of alternate ending that was just as good as the books. Or again, it's not a coherent ideology. You press people, they give you different answers. Well, I didn't even think about whether it was the book ending or not. A lot of them, like the traitors at Watchers on the Wall, continue to insist it was the ending in broad strokes, which they will play to the point of ridiculousness that, okay, what if Bran isn't king of all of Westeros, but king of Winterfell and Sansa's queen of the Vale? That is not the same. What if Arya doesn't even go traveling? Like, they, you realize they're addicted to this. That like the Matrix, they're inured to the system and will fight to defend it, that they will go through mental gymnastics to say this is broadly what the books are going to do, when, no, no matter how ridiculous, when it, it really doesn't resemble it. And I don't know how they, and if it comes to a point where it's like a character dies who lives or lives who dies, they always fall back on mentally blank spacing. I don't want to think about it. I remember the, the panel they had, at their little convention right after season eight ended, even their site runners admitted it makes absolutely no sense to me how the North could be independent, but the Dorne and the Iron Islands couldn't. I guess I'll just have to learn to live with it. And like both of them said that phrase, I have to learn to live with it. Like they have no answer. Like what if it is really different? So the thing I'm asking about in the comments is when people insist on that because their mind is broken, because it does not compute that Martin, th this is a travesty, yes. Martin gave them the full outline of his future books, and it was an extensive outline. At the big meeting they had in Christmas 2012 between the writing of season three and the writing of season four. And they chose to abandon huge chunks of it. They chose to mix and match elements to show people off. That they said, wow, this rape subplot is so meaty, let's give it to Sophie Turner, she'll win an Emmy Award for it. Note I say Sophie Turner, not Sansa. It's about the actors showing them off. Celebrity culture, that they're riding the coattails of celebrity actors. And he, uh, I had a recent video about um, two months ago with um, Gabaldon, the writer of the Outlander series. Finally, we had a person of authority verbalizing the, Martin, she said, quote, Martin had an outline. They chose to abandon it and mix and match elements from it that were unrelated just to show people off. We need news sites saying such things. We need major authority figures. Like, I, I, I'm saddened by the silence of Martin's contemporaries who haven't spoken out about this, like the Stephen Kings of the world. 
need to say, if you're his friend, call out Benny Offenweiss as abusive maniacs. That, but I've yelled about this in so many other videos. I mean, I'm sorry. It's just I saw other people reporting on this blog post update of. I'll make other things about that. It's just how the hell do you deal with they when they're not playing the same game we are? That if I say no, they didn't run out of book material. Can you prove that they ran out of book material? They're not even trying to prove that. And you even say something so obvious as. Sansa, Dorne, and Stannis were in print books. They chose, they didn't adapt that at all. They chose to ignore it. How can you say they ran out of material? The whole dialect, it's called dialectic, the citing evidence and counter evidence, in, they're not doing that. And when they just repeat things back at you, repeat back at you that meme, well, Martin didn't finish the books. That had nothing to do with the show going bad at all. They didn't even run out of print novels before they started being absurd. What are you saying? So, if you want to commiserate in the comments about that, please do. Just saying, here, there's this time someone yelled at me and I, I, they were just so blockheaded they weren't listening. Would you like to, in your own words, give your thoughts on when people are just reciting memes at you like that, not listening to that this is impossible, it's a, the, the evidence is Martin gave them books four and five and they chose to ignore them. What do you think we should... I just think widespread education through better journalism, which isn't one simple thing, but a widespread reform. But what do you respond to if you're doing that? And, and if it was happening live, or do you ever have arguments with like friends and family of how could they have run out of books? That isn't what happened. So please write that up, and if there's really good ones, I will read them off in a fan mail video. Your thoughts on everyone, every time someone comes... This is not about if you're purely a book fan and you're annoyed he didn't get the next book done quickly enough. Fine, that's a separate debate. I'm saying specifically people who blame the later seasons impossibly on... Oh, they ran out of books. They could have, and Martin said at the time, why did they race to the ending? This is what we kept asking with a little grin at every Comic-Con, every public panel since season one. And for four years they went, this is back when they gave interviews, uh, you know, we're trying not to outpace it, that we thought, and Martin said when season five happened, they could have turned books four and five into three seasons, or at the very least, two they burned through it in one. Because they didn't want to be there. For the same reason they burned through season seven and eight is these two truncated 13 episodes all together that we wanted to leave to do our movie career. This was just a stepping stone to us. We, they're not even loyal to it. They used you. So, if, if any other writer was in the same situation, even if Martin hadn't given them their, his outline, which he did, the print books alone could have gotten them through seven seasons. Think about that. Getting to the end of A Dance with Dragons by the end of season seven, and then another three seasons to kind of put together something else based on just following his outline, if you really think this is what Daenerys is going to do, I don't know. So, your thoughts on it, how do you... Experiences you've had, or suggestions you might have, for dealing with when people impossibly claim the book series not being finished is why things were bad in the show. Oh, really? You think... When they admit, oh yeah, Jon Snow not killing the Night King. We came up with the idea for Arya to kill the Night King when we were making Season 7 because we were subverting expectations. What does that have to do with the books being done or not? When they admitted this was a last-minute snap decision we made. So please just... I, I made this video so you can share your thoughts because it, it's so lonely dealing with... Because you read one or two comments, you understand. I'm running a YouTube channel. I read all hundreds of comments frequently by people who are yelling at me more than you guys. It, it, you on your own read, like, what, one or two of the other comments? I s weed out hundreds of these things, dozens of, you know, over the years of yelling at me all the time, well, you know, the books aren't done. I have seen print 
you know, on, on news sites, not even comment sections, people going, well, of course the books weren't done. What? How do you have a job? Why are you considered a news person? You are not a journalist. That isn't what happened. So please give your thoughts on that, either just commiserating or what you think we should do. Mouth off about that. And if any of them are really good long form one, you know, paragraph, maybe longer, I might put together a fan mail video. I do think there is a chance, reasonable chance, we might get the book, by, book six, by 2023, and then will come the day of reckoning, when it's so weird that everyone's asking, when's the next book, and I have this sinking feeling that they're not even going to read it, or maybe they'll read summaries of it. The, the casual audience who never quite abandoned Benioff and Weiss, or just were willing to blame the studio or Martin rather than blame Benioff and Weiss, or I don't think they even put much thought into it. What do you think went wrong? Well, you know, the show. The show is made of people. Do you blame the writers? Well, no, they're amazing in the behind-the-scenes videos. Those things are propaganda. That the world never really accounted for its original sin, that, the like, the sansa rape happened, the world shrugged, and gave them Emmy Awards, and never addressed what we were all screaming about, these guys are insane, and they abandoned the books. And then you have the amnesia or audacity or groupthink to turn around after season eight and say, well, Martin didn't finish the books. He sure as hell finished Sansa in the Veil, not some sort of Sansa rape which they threw out and never explained in any interview. And then watching people I respect, you know, interviewers and from major news sites, they were cowards and wouldn't press the question. And just did the little song and dance during late night interviews, like the first words out of the mouth of, the, of a late night interviewer should have been, what the hell is the Sansa rape? This is beyond the pale. And remember when they nearly got that Confederate show? How crazy did things have to get before people started remarking on th this guy's insane? Or, or how bad Austin Film Fest got? That this wasn't just season eight, and to the book audience I'm arguing it wasn't just season five. This has been around since the failed pilot. They just covered it up really well. Surprisingly well, but I have cited interviews that are saying, oh no, season one was a disaster behind the scenes. That it succeeded in spite of them, not because of them. So share your thoughts in the comments, but I really hope, if things are low now, when we actually do have book six in hand within the next two or three years, I'm not, I'm not holding my breath, but I don't think we might not get book seven. Book six, the first book to come out since, you know, the, the other one came out right before season two, that the first Martin thing f to show in this continuity, uh, not the prequel stuff, but the first new novel since they went off the rail, since they abandoned his books, will force the world to confront this, we let this happen. We weren't hard enough on him. The press, the press gave them a free pass that confront that, wow, Sansa's storyline was already diverging long before they ran out of books. And then again, I'm worried some people will say, oh, some people would rather believe that Martin didn't give them an outline would rather believe that. Believe, oh, they'll be saying, oh, if only Martin had given them book six earlier. When he gave them an outline, they chose not to follow it. And how many multi-million dollar screw-ups does Benioff need to keep making before he stops failing upward? Because right now he's running the multi-million dollar, hundred million dollar three-body problem adaptation at Netflix. Nothing changed. They won. The, we needed op-eds in, like, the Atlantic, New York Times scale things saying what was said about Joss Whedon and that cover story at New York Magazine, that this is an abusive maniac behind the scenes and what it was really like. The thing is, like, that New York Magazine cover story on Whedon, which really made the rounds. We never got that for Benny and Weiss. We never got that for the Sansa rape, or you want a good girl, but you need the bad... What, what happens when they make a Nymeria show and go, well, these are the ancestors of the Dornch. They are making a pilot for that. Will they be forced to address, you know, 
we made this racist, sexist trash for Dorn in the main show, and no one ever faced consequences for it. We, how did, oh god, they ruined Dorn in season five. What happened to them? We gave them another four seasons. Three seasons. And, and the status stuff, and what if that is drastically different in the books? There'll probably still be some people in their holes in the bottom of the internet saying Martin didn't rush out the books quickly enough, even though it has nothing to do with anything. I think we measure success by how many news outlets are saying that type of thing, because I am seeing news outlets now saying Martin didn't finish the books quickly enough for the TV show to have a good ending, which is absurd. That success will be measured in, we need to reform the entire news infrastructure because they just got addicted to this. And seeing that, like that other journalist um, who tried to put together the documentary about it, like four years, five years ago, why did the press just fall in love with this so much? Is it purely that they needed something new after Breaking Bad? I really don't know. Even when there was, it wasn't just, oh, mounting evidence. Willful blindness to a rape controversy. And they never pressed the question. That when it came to the point that how bad did things have to get that by season eight, infamously Jessica Chastain, who was a co-star in a movie with Sophie Turner, live tweeted out during that season eight feast episode, no, it is offensive to say that Sansa had to be raped to be strong. And that actually did get people talking. Why are you complaining now after season? That That's a microcosm of the whole thing. I'll stop on that. Why are you complaining now when this is exactly what was happening in seasons five and six? Why are you complaining now? Why did you give them a free pass for so long? And the people who were convinced that, thankfully, I can't get a good sense of scale on this. At least a lot of people do say that seven and eight, season seven and eight, were rushed because they wanted to go off to do movies. At least that much is obvious. But it's weird how sometimes you see the same person saying the same thing, and maybe I'm jumbling it up, of, oh, they want to do movies, and Martin shouldn't have finished the books quicker. How can it be both? But I wanted that even if people hate seven and eight, that you need to acknowledge, remember all that controversy in season five, and that you ignored a rape controversy where they bluntly said, we're throwing out a main character's storyline, and we don't even have to explain why we're doing it. Ever. And then they turned around and go, well, I guess they ran out of books. You know what? I'm going to link in the description box the preview chapter for Sansa's Veil storyline in Winds of Winter. And I want you to go and read that. I really do. After you leave your comment about that the books weren't finished yet, go and read just how different Sansa's storyline is. Well, Elaine Stone. By looking at the Winds of Winter preview chapter of just how different this is, and I really hope when the book six comes out, maybe it'll snowball, I don't know. You know I keep thinking no one's out there, that they needs to bring up the, the original sin that they ignored, that we ignored a rape controversy, which was book fan sites were quitting the show in disgust. Westeros.org quit the show in disgust while TV fandom went to unheralded era heights of, of hype and Emmy wins. This isn't normal. And it came crashing down. So what's your thoughts on all of that? I'm sorry, I'm just so upset about all this. People who say the TV ending would have been better if Martin had finished the books, when they abandoned books four and five, and for that matter were abandoning storylines since season one that they didn't like, particularly season two had a lot of issues with it. What are your thoughts on that? And if there's some really good ones, there's enough. I'm not sure if I'll do this. Only if I get enough good comments, I might read off some of the better ones, at least share them in the community tab of your thoughts on this and how we respond to that or just commiserating on times this happened to you. I look forward to everything you have to say.